All right, welcome back from that uh, report. In the wake of recent developments, the International Monetary Fund, IMF, has stated that the challenges of import restrictions and foreign currency shortages in Nigeria and other African countries have continued to stifle businesses. In its regional economic outlook for sub-Saharan Africa titled a tepid and pricey recovery, the body stated that these challenges could mar the post-pandemic recovery in terms of profitability of companies across the region. It said the post-pandemic recovery for the region comes during a time of global uncertainty and shocks and rising interest rates push sub-Saharan countries' expenditure from critical capital investment towards debt servicing. Now, international finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed joins me now to discuss more ahead of the MPC meeting as we keep our eye on the economy. Good morning to you, Mokhtar. Thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Thank you, Justin. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Now, Mukta, considering recent events, uh, a lot of people are anticipating um, a rising um, benchmark rate for, uh, at the, this month's um, MPC. What are your thoughts, really? I think it will happen. <laughs> I'm not to worry about it. I think it will happen. Maybe not the 200 basic point we saw before, maybe 100 basic point, but I think it will happen. Um, if you watch the, what the CBN governor said last week, he said that they seem to be seeing a little bit of improvement in the inflationary pressure. And uh, NBC report also said there was a slowdown, though very relatively small, but there was a slowdown. So um, I expect there will be a, a, a high, maybe by 100 basic points. That's my take, but definitely there's going to be a hike just to uh, fight inflation. Um, but the major challenge has always been the exchange rate. I think they will tell us more about that after their monetary policy uh, meeting, mm -hmm. what they want to do, because um, we don't seem to see this injection of FX into the market like what we expect. And by now, most of us were thinking that um, the exchange rate should be exchanging between uh, uh, 1,000 to maybe over between that 9, 950 to 1,000. But unfortunately, we are seeing it uh, close at 1,480 during the week. Hopefully, could we see uh, uh, a little bit uh, coming down this week, downward trend, especially with decisions that will come from the MPC. All right, before we talk more about the exchange, let's still stay with um, the MPC and, um, you know, inflationary pressures and all, uh, the reactions that have followed. Now, the Center for the Promotion of um, as, uh, Public Enterprise, CPPE, is contending that businesses are still facing difficulties in recovering from the stringent monetary policies, you know, enforced in the last uh, two months. But what uh, what do you really think about it? And uh, should be uh, uh, should there be uh, an increase in the benchmark rate? What are we likely to see in um, businesses and the economy? Well, then the really, um, Justin's were between the, 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 the ocean and the, 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 the deep blue sea and the ocean. So we need to do take the hard decision. And the hard decision for now will still have to be to increase rate, which is not going to be good for business. But again, when you are fighting inflation, uh, then you look at inflation pressure, then you look at the long-term um, reduction of inflation, because when inflation comes, uh, it, will meditate, uh, it, will, it will meditate any suffering that businesses have suffered. So, but if you continue to have inflation go uh, up like that, businesses also will not even be able to have patronage. So definitely, I think they, they are looking at the monster for inflation and they need to deal with it. And I think um, that's why you see those high, even if I, I personally don't think um, the way we go about our hike is a solution to our problem because, uh, like I said in your program sometimes ago, it's more or less like a copy and paste measure that we've been doing all through and we've not seen the result because we are just at attacking the symptom. We are not dealing with, this, with, the, with the fundamentals. So I, I think uh, for the first time, the CBN really knew what the challenge is, and they attacked it, uh, which has to do with the exchange rate. They attacked it, and you saw inflation come down marginally. If we have sustained the kind of pressure uh, we saw between the, the exchange rate, whereby the Naira was really gaining against the dollar, we might have seen those inflationary pressure a little bit lower than what we saw. So I think um, that is helping. So if if we know what the challenges are, I think we should have to deal with it. But unfortunately, um, we have to hike rates because we want to attract investors to come in with FX. And 
once this FSK comes in, we want to use it to stabilize our rates. And uh, so we are using uh, one stick to try to kill two beds. And I, I think businesses, yes, are going to suffer. Nigerian businesses are really going to suffer high cost of um, funding and um, cost of doing business will go high. And they will pass that to the consumer. But I don't think it will be as high as what we have seen in the previous quarter, especially if we are able to deal with the exchange rate. The last time, um, the last time we had issues like this, um, the exchange rate was hovering about uh, 1,900. So, but this time we are seeing an exchange rate. The next M this NPC meeting, we are seeing an exchange rate at 1,500 averagely. So, it it calls for um, good uh, uh, decisions that will be made. But I think uh, we will not see those 200 basic point like we saw before hopefully uh, I, I don't expect them to do that. I expect them to just have 100 basic points for us all right uh, let's look at another angle to all of this now that's um the currency in circulation which i'm um, surged um, by 130 percent year on year reaching a record high of 3.87 trillion naira in march 2024 i want you to break all of this down for me and um what implications um this actually hold well, uh, currency in circulation, ordinarily, that what he holds is that that means we are having, uh, we are foiling a lot of inflationary pressure because we have a lot of um, um, uh, uh, currency. But here's the, the, the difference between Nigerian currency in circulation and what we obtain globally. That's why I said we should also look for an in, in house solution to our major problem. Now, this is um, globally, when you see those uh, currencies, uh, uh, um, uh, um, um, uh, circulation, what you need to do is to reduce the flow of those currency in the market. But when you look at Nigeria, Nigeria informal sector is largely driven by cash. And mm -hmm. that sectors are really suffered. So uh, you remember the currency rebranding re or remodeling or re 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 all those uh, affected business in that space. So we are still trying to come out of that. So by redu reduction in and um, uh, currency in circulation is not really having those impact in the economy because we are an informal sector driven economy and largely driven by cash so when you see the cbn try to reduce those liquidity in the system you see the kind of panic that it creates in the system in the banking space it, it has a snowball effect on every area and uh, businesses are now be will become stranded because the uh, people could not no more do business with cash so is a, I don't think there's a short time solution to that. I think that's why I'm always, uh, when they came out with the cyber security, I was violently against it because uh, that will also defeat every idea of trying to attract more uh, into the banking space, as well as those of the informal sector. And also, you have the challenge of the fintech companies that had to uh, disable a lot of customers of that space. That also is contributing until they do their. Uh, um, do their KYC. So we are seeing a lot of those challenges because we are not dealing with some of these technological aspects of attracting more people in, in the informal sector into the banking space. So we need to come up with strategy to do that. Once you do that, naturally, uh, uh, liquidity will reduce in the system. Because if you look at the formal sector, you realize that liquidity has really, really come down. All you need to do is to, to drive to um, 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 uh, gas stations and then you see that a lot of people are no more paying in cash. They are paying through their cards and all that. And the gas stations are really um, 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 the, the, the POS or the or the ATM machines are working very well. But the challenge has to be that how many of the informal sectors have really now decided to go to this space because they went to this space through a particular fintech uh, company. But when the CBN came up with their directive of KYC and others, a lot of these people have left that space because they are not able to transact business. Their, their account have been disabled for them to re-register. So they take a lot of enlightenment to to get more Nigeria into the final in, into the banking space and then be asked to use technology that will drive down the, um, the the volume of liquidity in the system and that also will help address inflation. So that's why I said. When we say we want to deal with inflation through the liquidity side, we want to reduce the, num uh, the supply of liquidity into the system, it has a way of um, getting back at us, affecting a lot of businesses and causing the business businesses to, to, to lose a lot of customers. And before you know, those businesses uh, are out of business. So we need to begin to try to give them an orientation and get more fintech companies into doing um, um, business. 
So that's that's for me. That that's what I think will reduce um, those aspects of liquidity. And if you are able to address that, mm. then again you'll be able to address um, uh, um, inflation. But you, you know that some of these liquidity saving are not in the hands of um, most ordinary Nigerians. And some of these liquidity that we have that are not in the banking space are all those liquidity also that are chasing the dollar that are responsible for the exchange rate because some of these liquidity are gotten through corrupt corrupt practices from public civil servants. So they they they, they rather keep it at home uh, when any, whenever they need to exchange it, they rather take it out and exchange it rather to bring it back to the banking space of naira they bring it back uh, they rather hold keep it at home and change it to dollar so you have a lot of naira chasing very few dollar you see those um, um affecting the the exchanges so there's a lot of work to be done and um, by the security agency by the corrupt uh, agent corrupt uh, corruption uh, agencies like the icp icp SCPC and also the uh, Economic and Financial Crime Commission, the EFCC, and also then the bank after. So it's going to call it a lot of collaboration for mm. we to be able to address these um, liquidity issues that we are having in, in, in the system. All right. Uh, before we talk about um, the IMF and latest report for Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, the, just last week, uh, the CBN uh, uh, activated plans to double foreign currency um, remittance flows through formal channels. It actually granted them um, 14 uh, new international money transfer operators approval in principle. In your opinion, just how far do you think that will take us? It will take us far, um, um, Justin, especially in Nigerians with diaspora. Because what we have seen is that a lot of Nigerians in diaspora are beginning to use uh, some other tech, film tech companies that are not even dealing, are not duly registered, and uh, then they find other ways of getting the money down to their relative here. So once you open up that space, let them register, they have their presence here, then you will see that you will see an increment in, uh, in, the, in, in terms of remittance from Nigerian in diaspora. What we got from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics last uh, last year from the CBN was very was not too impressive, to, just two hundred million dollars. So I think the CBN have looked at that and uh, knowing that uh, most of the challenges that we have or how to do when when when, when we, we didn't create that market, that uh, retail market. So in addressing that retail market, I think that's why they are coming out with all uh, with all these um, um, system, um, um, systems to to attract more. Uh, uh, um, international money agents. I think it's a good move. Mm -hmm. uh, we might not see the result immediately. Like I keep saying, we didn't get here overnight. We won't get off here overnight. So, but if it find the uh, the day of this, and then depending on the on the type of technology and the fees that are involved in it, mm -hmm. fees really matter. Uh, if I'm sending the money to Nigeria and I'm looking at I'm doing high fee and those other ones that are laying on the corner that might not be that directly registered, but they have people that that and their fees are cheap you rather still go there so as we are creating that the cbn should also tell them in the area of fee payment make sure that it's it's competitive and it's um, it's acceptable to them that we attract more inflow i i totally support it okay let's talk about uh, the imf uh, regional economic outlook for sub-saharan africa uh it highlighted that um, the challenges posed by import restrictions and foreign currency shortages in nigeria and other african country uh, countries persists uh, in hampering business what are your reactions i'm sure you've um, actually seen um, that um, economic outlook up. what are your thoughts really i think they are not far from the truth um but again, we keep saying Africans have not been able to do trade within themselves, so we'll continue to have those challenges. So until we begin to do more trade within ourselves, that's where we'll be able to address these challenges. We do more trade with the Europeans and the Chinese and the Americans. So, and the major means of exchange is a um, uh, dollar. So by the time we begin to do a lot of trade within ourselves, that's when we will be able to address um, these challenges. And again, the African Continental Trade Agreement have not seen the light of day because mm. major super players like Nigeria and South Africa have not really key into it yet in the area of their businesses or their companies. So it's still just lying there. But when you have these two superpowers in terms of African economy, when they decide to key in there, you begin to see activities. So for now, they are not seeing any incentive to key in because a lot of trade, these two country doors, they are doing it basically with um, with Europeans, like I say, and Chinese, and the major means of exchange is the dollar. 
So that's why we are having those challenges. So if we, we, we have to look inward as an African country and begin to address, that's why I'm happy what happened over the weekend in the CEO uh, forum in uh, Kigali, Rwanda, where um, Aligo Dangute was rolling out about four years plan he had for Africa to be self-sufficient. That for me, in terms of uh, petroleum uh, products, and also even Nigeria by June, again, will not be importing one single liter of uh, mm. refined petroleum product into it. That would definitely help reduce the pressure on major African currency, especially Nigeria, the exchange between the Naira and the dollar. Because we know that uh, when the, the, the money that uh, uh, the NNPC make in terms of crude oil sell, uh, sometimes this money do not come in because of uh, we, they have to use some of it to, to, to uh, bring in refined petroleum products. So it's a good thing, uh, but again, to address those challenges that are lighted by the World Bank, uh, we have to begin to think of Africa. We do business within themselves, that is one. Then secondly, where, where you can make African product more com um, uh, um, competitive, not just competitive, but affordable mm. with international uh, prices, international best standards. So uh, Africa also begin to export not just the raw material, but also finished Finish uh, materials from yes. here. Because the challenge is that Africans seem to be um, exporting their raw materials to this mm. country because of lack of power or lack of technology to drive cost of uh, production. Mm. And this thing in terms come as finished product at over, over 100% of the price that uh, we use to sell those um, uh, raw materials to them. All right, must say a very big thank you to you, Mukta. Thank you for all the thoughts and um, the insights you have shared with us on the show today. We do appreciate them. Thank you for having me. Good morning. All right. And that's the size of the show. We must indeed look inwards um, as African countries and ensure that we don't just, uh, you know, export, uh, you know, fair raw materials, but also try as much as possible to finish the production and actually be self-sufficient and just uh, promote trade and within ourselves. Well, that's the size of the show for uh, this morning. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there. <laughs>